of analytics, you see where the peaks are. There's a little peak in the morning, people get in and begin to work perhaps, or they sit down at their desk at home, and they don't want to start work immediately. Huge peak around lunchtime, tails off, a four o'clock peak, off again, a little peak when people get home, half past six, and another peak just before they go to bed. So there's a, a definable pattern day in, day out, and you can see what people are doing. Uh, this is people engaging in the local democracy, engaging with their community in bite-sized pieces uh, every day from time to time, but not having to go to the drafty church hall third Thursday every month, whatever. Uh, and I, I feel I should repeat, repeat Sticky World uh, also as well to it. And you're supposed to do a dance about that one. No. <laughs> and we had also a wiki here to write a plan um, and, and I'm sorry, the other one here is the need to ensure all voices are heard, everyone can have their say. We've got pretty much ditto those, those whatever tools that there are, uh, local social media tools. Um, and we've also got here a couple more, bubbly, B-U-B-B-L-Y, which I tried Google and couldn't find, but you saw that. It's a crowdsourcing placement. It's a triplet. Uh, they're, doing, they're practicing their internet staff. I love it. They're living in placement. Graphic. And something else called MechTurk, which is a mechanical Turk, 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 Turk yeah. which is run by Amazon, and you can put up the problem that you want. A lot of people work on and say, okay, 50 cents for each person works in this and they will crowdsource it out and they will deal with all the payments. Okay. So that's got a hard pull crowdsourcing. That's not the commercial model. Yeah. So that's very skilled. That we, we that. I, don't, I don't know whether anyone who was in the, the kind of local authority sort of supporters group um, originally and has now dispersed on the other two tables. Quite a bit of the feedback from that. Do you think that those tools that have been suggested due to the problems that you identified to be doing? I just uh, add a comment. There is that big issue around those people that aren't included in, in technology. How do you deal with those? Yeah. One of the projects we're doing at the moment is working with big lottery, trying to work in low income areas, trying to find an answer to how you get low people in low income areas included in things like local social media tools. But I don't think it's an easy answer. Mobile is obviously part of it. Yeah. But I think that's a critical how do you get there? I thought that the sticky board at all, I mean, I'm not being paid for every time I say sticky board, I promise. But we can arrange it if you want. <laughs> <laughs> well, perhaps I should have a conversation after that. I thought it'd be quite good for that, but it's highly visual. It's kind of, yeah. And I suggested uh, to Alan, uh, maybe as well as having the. the, the and it's almost believable. <laughs> 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 But as well as having the text comments, what about having audio comments? Because one of the approaches we're taking with every budget projects is trying to get away from the tyranny of text mm -hmm. and enable the use of video and audio. So if you could just push a button and then leave a you know, short couple of sentences that might then the and that's, a, that's an example where you can have those audio comments then transcribed by someone using Mechanical Turk at some cheap price, so then it's still searchable and really? findable. Having, having actually designed and set up and run projects which enable people to leave audio comments, the one thing I can say is people hate <coughs> leaving audio because it reveals so much about them, the text, doesn't it? It reveals right. often your gender, your educational status. It people are very nervous about leaving their voice Unless you do that. in those things. Well, but, friends just well, you can. The, the but he's got a good point. So people yeah. will be resistant to even just leave it yeah. because of that. Yeah. So you can do multimodal and you allow all these things, but you do have to then distill them down, and yeah. and some people are put off by certain things, and it's just the way it is. Yeah. I mean, to be really radical, what if we just eliminated people who couldn't access technology from the process? How many are you losing? And then can you reach them using some other mechanism once you've now identified who they are, rather than trying to solve it in advance? So it's this funny problem of how do you reach them? Well, we have to know who they are first. I think maybe that's the answer. There's going to be a huge uh, several group of people that you're never going to reach through tech for, for, for a good time, so you have to find another way of doing so. But I don't actually think it's as who's who's connected to it and who's not as straightforward as we think. Right. Actually, that when exactly. I uh, yeah just spent I told you, just spent two weeks working in a slum in Kenya, and um, 
And you know, most people that we were, the community that we were working with, when you know, it was getting to the end of our time that we were working there, were like, how are we going to stay in contact? And they're like, you on Facebook? I was like, oh, yeah, I am. Okay then. And sort of, because they all access Facebook through their mobile. So you know, they're some of the poorest people in the world, but they're still using Facebook on a daily basis. That's fine. But, the and, but there right. is portions mm -hmm. of that community still that within that community that are on the fringes of that community that don't have access to. There are areas in England where fifty percent of people don't have access. So yeah. it's a real issue. There, yeah. are, there are areas in London where there is higher than fifty percent of lack of access. Right. And we've worked in some of those places and written reports about the fact that you can try and use some of these tools in the community in the attempt to help people within a defined community try and uh, organize themselves in new ways and there are uh, multiple reasons why they cannot participate and it's not just they don't have a phone it's not that they don't have a computer at home it's not that you know no broadband provider has come onto the estate to build the infrastructure it's the fact that you know they just simply do not have the time to learn something new um, we've got a report about how we did that on an estate in Islington and why why our attempt to bring these kinds of technologies into a community four or five years ago failed and we tried to map all the points of failure and how every time we attempted to remedy it by bringing in you know, multimodal, different approaches, online, offline ones, it kept failing. Um, and it's just very complex. So is that, not in effect, some of the community saying, we're not voting on this? Is that them opting out? And at what level do we say they've officially opted out? We now know it, rather than we're going to hit them again, we're going to hit them again, we're going to keep hitting them until they get in line. You know, it's like, do we force people to vote, like Australia, do we say, if you don't want to vote, you don't want to vote? Uh, for me, it's an interval to give people the channel that they can access if they want to. The motivation thing is a whole different question. Yeah. Sounds interesting. Yeah. Um, anyone from the last I don't want to leave this, so I'd like somebody else on the table to, to maybe just talk about some of the things that we addressed. So, um, uh, well, if I just maybe make a start, the first thing that we <laughs> 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 they're, 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 they're voting not to participate. <laughs> Come on, Chris Bella. No they, don't, they don't want the outcome. Shame well, someone on the table. Okay, like, well, the the tech 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 tech. Tech. The first thing that I'm going to just like Chris in it now because his first comment was, um, shall Can't I be, tweet and talk shall at I, the same time. <laughs> you said, shall I be the first person to write down Facebook? And that was immediately, everybody knows that at all. And we'll just, you know, just have that discussion, really. Um, so although that's you know, it's quite an important point while we all know it. Um, uh, in terms of some of the problems that we tried to address, what was that was the funding issue, wasn't it? Yeah, so uh, using crowdsourcing, Kickstarter, sites like that, to raise money to do your plan. Does anyone know what Kickstarter is? No. Chris? Um, there's, a, there's a number of similar sites, but you put your project on the site, you say how much money you need, people pledge small amounts of money. When you get to the minimum amount, you take their money. If you don't get there, you don't take the money, you don't do the project. Small amounts are like a dollar. This is a US site, a dollar, ten dollars. This is started by bands and other musical people or artists who want to get into the gallery or get the album out or whatever. And it's sort of morphed into community things, among other things. And people have raised hundreds of thousands of dollars this way in really tiny, small amounts. How, it's actually sort of how Obama got elected, because he raised 600 million through little tiny amounts. There's actually a so pre, I think it's even pre my society at all. They built called Pledge Bank, which is where you could yeah. post up a pledge, and the pledge might be, I will give 10 pounds to this thing, and they did it with PayPal donations yep. and things like that. We also made the point that technology should be used to enhance involvement rather than replace, you know, more traditional forms of involvement. Perhaps by using, you know, perhaps you can use landline phones. I don't know for some older people who don't have broadband at home to enable them to contribute. Maybe in the same way that when you call a bank, you know, you've got various questions posed and various menus. I think that would suit, you know, some 
people who aren't on the internet or who don't want to be on the internet quite well. Um, I know my mum doesn't have broadband at home, she'd much rather use the phone than anything else. Um, so I think that was the, the big point that we made, wasn't it? It should be used to enhance rather than replace more, you know, other face-to-face -face or traditional forms of involvement. And we also came to the conclusion that maybe um, if there is um, a tool, it should be sort of an umbrella tool that, you know, is easy to find, um, a bit like a sort of a, a notice board style with links perhaps to training, you know, maybe a sort of visual tutorial on how to make a neighbourhood plan, maybe links to the council website with the evidence base, you know, needed, um, all the other things we said, um, I don't know, some of you have other guys have brought in more advanced. <laughs> Technology. What was the thing you said? Dipity was it? Yeah, Dipity, which is a timeline thing, which could incorporate feeds from blogs, um, from Flickr, uh, YouTube, things like that. So it just provides you with a, uh, a time uh, dimension to a decision-making process. We started throwing in all sorts of um, different tools for different purposes. Some of which were mobile-based. Um, so Augmented reality type platforms, things like that, um, QR codes um, cropped up. So, working with, with mobile tools. One, one thing that occurred to me just while we were having a debate about other tools, was, uh, maybe not for now, but as cable TV, as we switch to digital, vote with your red button. Yeah. Not, yeah, most people have got TVs, probably got more TVs than computers, um, but vote with the red button if you could enable that community engagement. I think it's something that I've always been interested in is actually how we make what we're doing in a digital sense parallel with what we're doing in a, in a real world sense and how do you bring those two together and also something, another side of that that came up at the beginning of this week was um, how do you make your voting or, or your engagement, is it the term ubiquitous, so everywhere? Mm -hmm. Um, so we're talking about, we talked about in the referendum stage about, you know, maybe on the back of your post office receipt there's a voting form or something. And actually, you know, how do you make this engagement on this project that's just ever present in the community in all the media that you interact with? There is also, as part of the localism bill, the requirement on the council's part to contribute resources. <coughs> and they already do a lot of things in this area to engage. So some information already exists or some resources are there or some expertise so they know the groups in the community so a neighborhood plan doesn't start from zero we can actually leverage what does work about the council process today nobody's mentioned the planning board it's up there somewhere sorry but tell us more well on the planning portal it's been a painful process but it's actually now got the interactive house which is a 3D model, which tells you what has permitted development rights and what needs planning permission in terms of roof extensions and things. Um, and it also links to building control, uh, so that it also links to what you need to do to meet part L insulation or something. And this is a very user-friendly thing now that it works. Um, so I would just go on the planning portal and look for, it's, it's always promoted on the home page somewhere, um, the interactive house. And uh, it will tell you what you can get away with when you build bits onto your semi-D and all that. That's um, the problem. It's no good for terraced houses and conservation areas, which cover large parts of the world. It's a bit active. No, no, we were quite right. It doesn't cover everything, but it, it is a mechanism which yes. you could it see could how adapt, you could model neighbourhoods that way. And uh, certainly in terms of training and access to the how-to guidance on how to do a neighbourhood plan, the planning port, will, the port I imagine, will eventually be up there. Once we have a look, the bill is an act and we know the rules, it will probably set out the guidance. Do you want to do a neighbourhood plan? What's quite good about it is that it's got a consumer section and a professional section, and then the government section. So consumers can go in, and it's in relatively simple English, and it's user friendly. And then that section, if you're a neighborhood, if you're in the part thinking, yeah, we ought to do a neighborhood plan, then that's an obvious starting point for how do we do it, what do we have to do, and what does it really mean? So that's the thing, is a lot of, yeah, sort of professional documents, 
planning side or sort of architectural design, people who are not with that crowd or, or coming from a different background are just totally baffled by a lot of the language that's used. I would ask just if we could have a table of contents of what has to be in the plan. And I've yet to have anyone in the group I'm working with say this is what's in the plan. And this may be a great place to find it because even if you just know what the topic headings are that you can start to get your head around. You write them up and you choose your own name. Yeah, but that means anything goes, yes. which won't pass the uh, sorry the examination phase. Oh, my, almost everything. Sound. Yeah. Yeah. And I think the biggest problem is that in, in my experience of working with groups and institutions and professional bodies, you never get more than twenty percent of the members. Um, showing signs of any life. So the idea that you've got to get 50% to actually do something is really difficult. 50% of the people who don't. Do you turn up? Yeah. <laughs> they won't be anything like 50% It's a sort of like people. local elections, you know. Yeah. You just have to get a plurality of a very small turnout. So the important thing is to have an odd number of voters that way you get a result. <laughs> no um, coalition. Well, uh, yeah, I think